short psalm, but a beautiful psalm. Probably we can meditate for hours and hours reading this thing because it shows so many attributes of our God, right? He, he, his love is so big that it reaches to the heaven and his, his, his love is unfailing, is priceless. And, and we can keep on going, reading about the Psalms and, and keep meditating about how wonderful, how mighty, how infinite our God is. But this morning, I would like to bring uh, two very specific things out from this Psalm. One is from verse one to five, where it shows about a man who is totally wicked, completely wicked, okay? There's no way uh, he can think right. He builds for himself a standard which he feels is right and he follows it. And that's it, that's the end of his. He, 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 he keeps on doing wrong and wrong and, and completely he commits himself to the sinfulness. That's the verse one to five. And the next, uh, verses from five till the end is all beautiful things about God, how he blesses. But the, the, the critical thing over here is verse six, which says, your righteousness, whose righteousness? Your righteousness, not my, not Pastor uh, Sam Kutis, not uh, 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 Brother Jason's, but your righteousness, God's righteousness is like mighty mountain. That's verse six says. And same verse 10 also says, your righteousness to the upright in heart. And it's not like anyone's right, it's God's righteousness. So brothers and sisters in today's world, what is happening? What is happening? Everyone builds his own truth. Everyone believes in stuff which he makes up. He, he makes up for himself truth and false, which is relative to this world. And he starts believing in those truth and false. Okay, so how, how does a man who live in this world would define uh, the, uh, or, or define the, the righteousness? He, he would define the righteousness based on all that he has learned through his life, all that he, he feels is correct, he feels it's wrong, he builds his thing, right? And, 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 then, and then, then there is a, a people who call others righteous because they conform to the laws and rules of this world. So for example, a nation has constitutions and laws, and if you abide to, this, to those laws and rules, you are called a righteous person. But in God's eyes, that's not righteousness. How does a spiritual, how, how do we define uh, 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 righteousness uh, more spiritually? Or what is the spiritual definition of uh, uh, righteousness uh, uh, what we, in terms of, uh, uh, um, uh, in, in the eyes of God? What, what, what would be the definition of righteousness? And I, I, I have put it in this way. It's, uh, it, the righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of God. Nothing else. Righteousness is the quality of being right, not in the eyes of uh, our president, not in the eyes of any human being, not in the eyes of uh, my spouse, right? Or not in this, uh, uh, being right in the eyes of my boss. Righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of my God. And that includes, I, I put it as four C's. That includes four C's, character, conscience, conduct, and command, okay? So that's the four C's, character, conscience, character is our nature, that has to be righteous. Conscience, that's our attitude. Our conscience has to be pure. That, and then there's our, uh, our conduct, definitely our actions has to be righteous, correct. And then the last is the command. That's, that's again beautiful, right? Four C's, command is the word. The word is like a, a double-edged sword. Like we, we all know that. And the word is like our word, what we speak out. And our word is nothing but God's word. We have to carry God's word in us. And this is what uh, uh, Isaiah 33, 22 says, Lord is the judge. 
Lord is the judge. Lord is the uh, king. Our Lord is the lawmaker. Our Lord is the lawmaker. Our Lord is the judge. Our Lord is the king. And above all, our Lord is the one who saves us. Okay, so that's the word. That's the word. We have to carry that word in us. So, but, but, but what happens in this world? The world has a different law. The world has a different law. We, we, we studied all those laws in our physics. We studied uh, um, Newton's law, right? We studied uh, law of gravity. Uh, uh, Einstein, uh, right? Oh, sorry, Newton. Uh, he was sitting under an apple tree and an uh, apple falls. Gravity. He made gravity law. He made motion law. He made, uh, uh, and uh, all the young people who are there, uh, my favorite law is the third law. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's a simple, uh, a simple uh, thing. I don't remember the first two, but uh, but then these are the laws of the nature. God, God is above the nature because He is the creator of, of of this whole world. He would be sitting and laughing at us and saying that oh, uh, oh, these uh, silly kids. They found gravity and they made all physics out of gravity, and they don't even care what my laws is. So. The human laws is perverted and they make laws to uh, on these natures and they say that the earth came into existence by a big bang and there is a fossil fuel underneath our earth uh, which is because of all the organisms which are there and I cannot fathom that all those fuel which we take out all those great creation I cannot fathom that God is unfathomable the scripture does not talk about the laws of the uh, nature the scripture the Bible talks about his righteousness his righteousness, the scripture talks about his righteousness, which regulates the God and human relationship. Okay, which regulates the God and human relationship, which is the foundation of our relationship with my neighbor. So if my relationship is not right with God, then it cannot be right with anything else. So righteousness is a God-centered attribute no man can attain it with his own effort. It's like salvation, same way. Righteousness, God's righteousness is it's God's attribute. And, and, and we cannot attain it. And in, in comparison to God's righteousness, how is our righteousness? And, and Isaiah 64, 6, uh, it says, our righteousness is filthy rags. That's a very common uh, scripture, right? Uh, our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. Have you seen filthy rags? Right? Uh, I, I get very angry to see uh, bad rags in it because it's all dirty, mushed up, and every dirt is in there. And, and most of the time, like our kitchen rags get like that, right? And, and you hate to step on that kitchen rag because it's all uh, filthy. And our righteousness is similar to that righteousness, no use, no use. But, but what, what, what is it? We have to attain God's righteousness, that's our relationship. But, but here is the good news. Righteousness is not being legalistic. It's not about achievements, okay? God, it's like going to God's school of law and, uh, and, and, and then we are, we are getting this degree in righteousness. No, righteousness is not something which we can attain in a way. Righteousness is like salvation, a gift of God to humanity through, and we all know that, know that thing. We all know that thing, gift of God to humanity through our Christ, Jesus Christ. So the Old Testament, uh, when we read about the Old Testament, there is all those laws and everything. And, and, and it says in uh, Deuteronomy 6.25 that all these laws, and, 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 and be careful, like God accounts for righteousness for those who carefully observe all the laws, not one, not two, not five, but he accounts for righteousness to those who observe all the laws of, of God. 
And is it possible for, for us to observe all the laws of God? Not at all, not at all. It, 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 it actually exposes our humans, our, our, our inability, our inability to accomplish God's perfect standard. Okay, so God's righteousness, God's uh, um, perfect standard is unfathomable. It's, it's beyond human capacity, beyond small human being, and we cannot think of achieving that thing. Okay, but God still wants us to achieve that thing, and I'll, I'll reach to that thing. But what's the good news? And the good news, we, we all know that the good news, what is the good news? Good news is, uh, uh, since the death and resurrection of Christ, the purpose of law, and the purpose of law, we all know the purpose of law is to save us. Huh? And uh, so the purpose of law has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And in him, we are made right with God. So Romans 3.22 say the righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believes. The righteousness, remember, the righteousness from God comes through Jesus Christ to all who believe. So the good news is we are all righteous in the eyes of God through, the, through, through, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. So once again, uh, brothers and sisters, I want to <clears throat> emphasize on this, the, the, this, uh, the, this uh, the, uh, Psalms 33, 36, uh, we all read about righteousness of God. Righteousness is not human attribute. Righteousness is God's attribute. God wants us to pursue righteousness. Okay, God wants us to continuously pursue his righteousness. And the famous, uh, um, uh, we all always talk about like uh, Matthew 6, chapter 6, where it says that, but seeks first his kingdom and his righteousness, right? Uh, um, and all these things, everything else would be given unto you. So that's, G Jesus is preaching that thing as uh, his righteousness, God's righteousness we have to serve. Brothers and sisters, remember that we are incapable to attaining God's unfathomable righteousness, but we have the hope through Jesus Christ. Keep pursuing God. Keep make God our center of the life so that we pursue God, we pursue his righteousness, and we are not like people of this world who build their own standards who build their own laws, who says that the laws govern everything, who say that we are created out of monkey. Can you believe that? Uh, so those are the theory that is put forth, but we cannot rely on those relative truth, relative truth, okay? Those are relative truth, which the human construct from his small, uh, minute mind. We cannot uh, rely on those uh, laws and ordinance given by this. We have to rely on the ordinance of God. So with that, um, I will wrap up and I guess I finish within my uh, allocated time. Um, but, but I would like to pray and conclude this, this portion of our service. Let's all close our eyes and uh, um, uh, remember our Lord who has given us this beautiful day, Lord, to, to come before him. And, and to pursue him and to make him as the center of our life. Nothing in our life, no job, no family, no, nothing of this life is, is critical for us because every and each one of them would automatically come to us. The joy, the peace, the love, everything automatically would come to us if we, if we pursue his righteousness, if we pursue our God who is almighty who is the lawgiver who is the king who is the judge and above all he is the one who is going to save us this day and in the days to coming and he is the god who has given us the keys to the heaven and who has made us inherent given us the inheritance of that heavenly kingdom and now it is our chance brothers and sisters to completely focus and rely on 
him and pursue him throughout our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this time. Help us, Lord, to meditate on your words and take it in our hearts and carry it day in, day out and do your will in our lives, Lord. We ask this prayer through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.